Hi guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through this chapter. 6.5, disaccharides. Condensation and hydrolysis, forming and breaking glycosidic bonds. Glycosidic bonds. Glycosidic bond is a bond that connects two sugar molecules, two sugar molecules together. So for example, you could have two glucose molecules stuck together. They'd be connected together by a glycosidic bond. You could have a glucose and a fructose. They would be combined with a glycosidic bond. You could have galactose and glucose. That would be a glycosidic bond, for example. Now, let's take a look down here at this diagram. Here we have the monosaccharide glucose, and we're adding it to another monosaccharide of glucose. Now look at what happens. Look at one of the products. One of the products of this reaction to form the disaccharide is water. So going from left to right, this is a condensation reaction. It's a condensation reaction because it forms a molecule of water. Now, let's back up a little bit here. Notice how this, oops, sorry, wrong one. Notice how um, basically this carbon here and that carbon there are joined together via an oxygen, an oxygen. So right here, let me circle the glycosidic bond right there. So there's carbon number, say, A. And there's carbon B. So there's carbon A and there's B. They're joined together by an oxygen, an oxygen that, that's holding them together. And this is the glycosidic bond. The glycosidic bond is the bond that holds together two sugars. Okay? So far, so good. Now, let's just back up a little bit more and let's just circle that again. Right there. That's the glycosidic bond. It's the bond that connects two sugar molecules. So we have glucose on both sides of that oxygen. This is a glycosidic bond. Glycosidic bond. The bond that connects two sugar molecules together. Okay? Now, if we were to go the opposite direction, that way, through the reaction, well, here we have water is reacting with our disaccharide to make two monosaccharides. So this is a hydrolysis or hydrolysis, okay? Water is breaking that bond. It's breaking that bond to make two monosaccharides. Both of them are glucose in this case. So this is a hydro hydrolysis reaction. So forming the glycosidic bond is a condensation reaction. Breaking the glycosidic bond is a hydrolysis reaction. Now, you should be able to identify a glycosidic bond just by looking at it. Just If I told you on an exam, circle the glycosidic bond, you should immediately go circle that carbon, that oxygen, and that carbon. And that's your glycosidic bond right there. Okay? Now, remember we talked about alpha and beta. And you had to find the anomeric carbon to do it. Well, right here, that's the anomeric carbon. And right there. That's the anomeric carbon. Okay, so there's two anomeric carbons for every disaccharide. Now the bond, the glycosidic bond, is right here. So the glycosidic bond in this case is in the alpha position because that oxygen right there is down from this anomeric carbon. Okay, let me back off of that. This oxygen here is down in relation to this anomeric carbon. Okay? This one right here. It's that anomeric carbon we're worried about. We're not worried about this one to when we're looking at the glycosidic bond because this one is not part of the glycosidic bond. Only that one is. So this glycosidic bond is alpha. It's in the alpha position. Okay? Now, let's move on. Here's one of the disaccharides that you need to be able to identify by sight, and it, you just have to know this is maltose. 
Maltose is from malt sugar. It's a disaccharide form from the breakdown of starches. Okay, so malt sugar, maltose is two glucose put together. It's two glucose put together. All right, it's called maltose. So we have two glucose put together, and they're put together with a glycosidic bond that is alpha. Okay, it's put together by a glycosidic bond that is alpha. Now, malt sugar is uh, generally used in the brewing industry or the liquor industry, and it's broken down to make um, alcohol by yeast. And that's where the uh, alcohol and beer and some of the some uh, spirits come from. Another sugar you should know, right here, this is lactose. Now, notice lactose is right there. There's the anomeric carbon. Here's the other anomeric carbon over here. It's not involved in the glycosidic bond, so don't worry about it. This glycosidic bond is beta. Notice how at this um, anomeric carbon, the oxygen is pointing in the upward direction. So this is beta. So this disaccharide is beta. Beta. Oops. There you go. I'll get my lights back on here. Okay. Now, lactose is a galactose. Oops. Bond it to glucose. And they have a beta glycosidic bond between them. All lactoses have a beta glycosidic bond. If it doesn't have a beta glycosidic bond, it cannot possibly be lactose. Lactose has a galactose with a glucose. It has to have both with a beta glycosidic bond between them. That is lactose. Now, lactose, as pretty much everyone I'm sure knows, comes from milk. It's a milk sugar found in mammalian milk. So cows, humans, goats, pigs, whatever, have lactose in their milk. And of course, a lot of folks are intolerant to it, which means they'll get cramping and gas and it's just, you know, generally just bad for those folks. Okay. Here's a very important disaccharide. This is sucrose. Sucrose is table sugar. It is table sugar. It is found in sugar cane, of course, and maybe you never thought of this, but also in sugar beet. Sugar beets. Okay. Now, uh, sucrose is a glucose. With fructose. With fructose. So glucose and fructose bond it together. Now, this is somewhat unique in that both anomeric carbons from both monosaccharides are involved in the glycosidic bond. So you could identify, or you should actually identify, this glycosidic bond as alpha and beta. Because notice, from this, this uh, anomeric carbon's point of view, the oxygen is pointing in the downward direction, right? So from this anomeric carbon, you look down and you see the oxygen. That's alpha. From this anomeric carbon, you look up, and that's beta. So from one anomeric carbon's point of view, the bond is alpha. From the other, the bond is beta. Okay? So uh, suc pardon me, not, uh, sucrose has an alpha-beta glycosidic bond because the anomeric carbon is between two, pardon me, the glycosidic bond is between two anomeric carbons. That's how it works, okay? And this is sucrose, table sugar. So far, so good. And that was our... Introduction to disaccharides. Pretty short little chapter section, but a very important chapter section. I expect you to be able to identify glucose, pardon me, um, maltose, lactose, and sucrose by looking at them. Be able to circle the glycosidic bond and point out any anomeric carbons and indicate if the bonds are alpha or beta. All right? And with that, that's the end of that part of the chapter. I'll come back with my next video and finish off chapter six. I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.